Hey, welcome to this session. On in this session, we're going to talk about agility and with model groupings. Now, agility or agile in a data warehouse concept. Um, it's quite a lot of content out there. So the first thing I'd like to say is, is if you want to build an agile data warehouse or build an agile data vault, you go ahead and read as much as you can. Um, there are several books there by different authors. There are blogs, um, all coming at it from different angles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about two different parts of it. The one is you need to, to be agile in a data vault space. And a data vault is totally geared up for this and, and designed for this. Um, you need to be agile in the way that you model and then the agile in the way that you deploy. So to be truly agile, if you think about having a source system or multiple source systems that you are modeling towards a target, um, you could have source systems and most of our customers have source systems of hundreds of tables. And bringing hundred, hundreds of tables into your um, data warehouse automation tool, you want to be able to focus on the the small deliverables or the short deliverables that you need to have, right? So being agile and to start small and add incrementally is vital to any software automation or data warehouse automation that you can use. And then you need to have the ability to use those smaller iterations and be able to incrementally um, and continuously deploy on top of each other. So in the upcoming release of more flex, what we have done is added this additional column here called model grouping. Now, I've only brought in the venture works here, only a couple of tables here, but I'm going to explain or it's going to show the same difference. What you now can do is at the, on the objects, you can go ahead and, and you know, uh, provide groupings here. So what I've done here is I've said, well, these tables here are in the customer domain. These tables here are in the product domain and these tables here are in the sales domain. So let's just say for whatever reason that um, your first sprint or your first iteration, you only need these two tables. Now, again, as I said, most of the customers who work with these are hundreds of tables. And, you know, you may have only want a subset of those tables in your first iteration because you really want to model it incrementally and make sure you get the model right. So all I need to do here is go into set current sheet. So from there, I'm going to go into Bimble Studio. And all I'm going to do here is just going to go refresh the metadata. And what's going to do here, you won't see a change here. But effectively, what's going to happen here is um, all the metadata here is going to have now the model grouping added to it. And now what, what I can do is to go and have a look at, um, as I said, I want to uh, do an, uh, just a small part of my data vault model. I'm going to go to my data vault preview accelerator here and go and say, you know, I want to um, do that record source, the Adventureworks LT record source. And the model grouping I want is just the sales model grouping. And then I want to go and publish this to my um, data vault. I'll commit this and I'll hit the preview import. So the data vault preview import is going to tell, show me my preview. Now, what I'll, one, of, um, one, one of the key things here about the, being agile is what I've got here is I've got my two hubs, my sales order hub and sales order line. I have the two links for them. And there are satellites here. And again, I can go and do a lot more modeling around this space here. But what I also have is I have, because the sales order and sales order line refers to the hub, the product, the customer address, I need to infer or create these hubs. Otherwise, I would have links without hubs. So although I have only um, included the sales, from the links, I'm deriving the hubs. And that's the way that we can do this. So let me just show you here in the, um, in the visual, visual editor how, what this will look like. So I'll go ahead here and go and look at my database schema diagram. And this is going to just give me a visual representation of what's happening on the side here. And then I can just do a visual review of this. And this is great when you are, as I said, when you are doing a big data vault model. Um, you may want to just visualize or model or, t or design um, only subsets of your data vault model. You know, you may even want to just look at the data vault preview here. And, um, you know, as I can, as you can see here, it gives you a quick view. So this over here is now my model. And once I'm happy with that model, I can go ahead and just hit publish data vault import. Uh, um, and what it does is it takes this preview and publishes the metadata to the metadata repository or the database, and then pulls it back down and then we'll bring in all of the code here. So now I've got all of my code here to both create the, to create the small uh, data vault, um, a subset of the data vault, and also to build all the packages required for it.
There you go. As you can see there, I've got the packages to do my hubs and my and, and, and my data vault for my product and my um, links there. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead here and just build this all out and then I'll show you what the packages look like. All right, so the build has been successful here. Um, let me go ahead and show you the output of the packages. Now, both the output of both the um, our SSI's packages and if you were doing sort of a SQL-based ELT, um, the, they will have the same um, process. So the first one that we do here is we're just going to look at the sales order detail package here. And the key thing I want to show you here is that um, the the design pattern of all of our packages work this way it'll, it'll grab and, and again you can at, at a batch level here you can have as many packages run in parallel as you want by defining how many uh, package threads you want to run in parallel but in the individual package it, it works in this way so it'll it'll load the hub and then it'll load any links associated with so it loads it per source table um, so it'll load first load the hub and then it'll load all the links if there's multiple links, it'll load the links. And again, these will be parallelized or they will be in parallel. And then again, if you have one or multiple satellites for the source, these will all be loaded in parallel. Um, don't worry too much about the detail there. The thing that I want to point out to you here is this infer hub. So inside of, um, so recently Roland Voss wrote an article about um, eventual persistence um, and uh, your referential integrity in a data vault. Uh, to make sure that we don't have any links that reference, you know, it could reference a product, but that product hub, as you say, may be either not uh, modeled yet, so we don't have the source of the product being um, generated yet, so there may be no data going into the product hub. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we effectively create the missing products in this process from the link, so from the table, that are inserting the links, we can create this inferred link hub. Um, and the, 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 it's quite simple. Inside of Normalflex, there is a simple setting that you switch on. Let me show you the setting here. It's called Data Vault, it's Data Vault Infer Hub Link Hub. So there's just a setting here, and I'm just gonna hit the word infer here. And as you can see here, we have two settings um, really, but the one the first one here is Data Vault Infer Link Hub. And that what that means, if I've set that to yes, that means that if I'm loading a link at the end of the load, I need to go and check if there's any missing hub records and then we'll insert the hub records there for us, right? Um, again, if you have a, um, a source that you are loading at in full and you won't have any missing record you can just switch this off to you can set this to no and that will speed up the load process a little bit but to be honest that inferring of the link based on our um, current um, customer stack of uh, customers um, that is really not a concern when it comes to performance so once again i'd like to thank you for watching this very short um, video here about data vault um, agility or being agile in data vault and how bumbleflex can help you by giving you the ability to um, model in P, uh, in subsets, so or in by domain, um, breaking your model down into smaller pieces, um, and look forward to seeing you in the next session. Thank you.